Welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. In this tutorial we want to talk about the concept of centripetal acceleration. Here is a practice problem. The rotor ride moves at 13 meters per second and the ride has a radius of 4 meters and takes 2 seconds to make one full revolution. I would like to start by drawing a simple sketch of what's going on in the problem. We got a radius of 4 meters and we got a linear speed, remember this should be a tangent line make a better rotor there and the linear speed always moves tangent to your circle so we got 13 meters per second for the linear speed and we got a time of 2 seconds so before we go into the calculation. I always like to go over some of the uh, fundamental things like the terminology, um, the equation itself, and the units that go with each variable or symbol in the equation. So our equation for centripetal acceleration is A equals your linear speed squared divided by the radius of your circle. So again, remember velocity is always tangent to the circle your centripetal acceleration is always towards the center. Well, let's talk about the um, terminology and units now. Alright, so on this screen we see the centripetal acceleration equation and the terminology. So let's go through this. Uh, our equation is A equals V squared over R. Our symbol in this little C stands for centripetal. Centripetal means center seeking. So the accel uh, centripetal acceleration has units of meters per second squared. The linear speed is meters per second. Remember linear speed is always tangent to your circle. And then here's the radius, which uses the symbol R. And again, distance is always the standard unit in physics for distance is meters. Here's our terminology um, and basic working definitions. Uh, feel free to stop the video and uh, take any notes. Once you understand the uh, equation and the terminology and the concepts of the of the centripetal acceleration, it's much easier to uh, solve the problem. Um, in order to solve a problem, I always like to use some kind of system of um, collecting my data. I, I use what's called the circle label method. So you scan through the problem, you look for units, and then you circle them and then you match them with the letter for the equations. So a little t here just means tangential. Tangential and linear mean the same thing. And I see second, so I circle that and label it with the letter t. And that's time. Then we have um, the ride takes two seconds to make one full revolution. And here's our radius. Our radius is four meters. Circle that and put an r there. So we're our goal here is to calculate the centripetal acceleration, which is in meters per second squared. So we'll notice that uh, we have some extra data here in the problem because there's no t in the equation. Okay, so now that I've organized my data, I got the circle label method done. Uh, next thing I'd like to do is put my data in what we call a, a t-bar, um, just a table where on the left side you put your knowns and on the right side you put your what you're looking for. There's the question mark. So we got our unknowns and knowns. Um, for simple problems, maybe this you could say this isn't necessary in either one of these steps. But once you get to the harder ones, it's always good to have a, a good solid method to solving all your physics problems. So what I do here on the left side is put all my data that I've collected. And on the right side, we're looking for AC, and then you know that's in meters per second squared. So once I have my data, it's easy to see where it goes in the equation. There's 13. Remember T we didn't need, and then R is my radius, and it goes here. And then now it's a simple uh, calculation here. Um, 13 squared divided by 4, and you end up with 42.25 meters per second squared. 